My name is Jason Cherniak, and I'm running to be your regional and local counselor in Richmond Hill. Thank you everybody for joining me here today. Uh, first and foremost, I couldn't be here without the support of uh, my wife Heather and my kids Benjamin and Charlie. Thank you so yeah. much for supporting us. Thank you Vito for your support. We're going to miss you in Richmond Hill being on council. Uh, you have big shoes to fill and I'm going to do my best to keep them shiny. <laughs> I see Dave back there. So you've been there for 12 years. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be here for 16 years at least. But just to be clear, you have my support as well. So thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much for coming out and saying that you support me for this role. I really appreciate that. Yeah. There are many good events that wouldn't happen in Richmond Hill if it weren't for you connecting people and making sure that they happen. You were a great community builder in our town, and I really appreciate you coming on this. Reza, thank you for your help and guidance. You've already given me a great deal of good advice uh, since starting even after a difficult election campaign. I appreciate you coming out and helping me yeah. so much. And of course, Janine, thank you for being the MC. Uh, I appreciate all the work you've given me despite the business and uh, various activities you're responsible for. And thank you also for the work you're going to give me in the future. <laughs> So I think Res has already introduced all the politicians that are in the room. I'm not going to go through the list of them again today. Uh, but uh, I do want to particularly thank Stephen Del Duca for coming. Uh, I do believe he's going to be the next chair of your region, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. There are also other candidates in the room who aren't already elected. Uh, Lydia Cafea is here. Thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to mention that David Bishop is a past councillor from Richmond Hill. Thank you for coming. And uh, Leona Alice sent me a very nice letter of support. I really appreciate her doing that, and uh, unfortunately she's out of town today, but uh, thank you to her as well. I first moved into Richmond Hill over 30 years ago. I went to Crosby Heights, I went to uh, Charles Howitt, and I went to the old Richmond Hill High School. For the latter, I went away to university. When it was time for me to start my law practice, there was no doubt that I was going to start it here in Richmond Hill. This is my home. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've built my own business. I've trained articling students to be lawyers, and I've created jobs in the local community. I really have gotten a lot of the, out of it. Uh, many of you in here know that I'm a committed volunteer. You know me from the Rotary Club or the Board of Trade or McKenzie Health Hospital Foundation or Shadow Path Theatre Productions. I will stay committed to volunteering after the election in October. I believe it's vitally important for everybody to do in town. Law is a good business and it's rewarding when I help my clients. And some people have asked me, why do you want to give that up to be a politician? Um, well. <laughs> I'll tell you something, there's only so much I can do for my clients as a lawyer. When I have a client forced to take possession of a condo in Richmond Hill without a working toilet, I see a problem that only a town councillor can fix. When another client applies to build a patio at a pub, perhaps this very pub, and it takes two years to get a building permit from the town, I see a problem that only a town councillor can fix. When another client is applying trying to build houses that have already been approved in York Region, and it takes a year to negotiate a 10-page legal agreement because the region won't respond for 60 days, I see a problem only a regional councillor can fix. As a lawyer and a business person, I'm committed to using my business experience and my legal knowledge to help fix the problems that stand in the way of our residents and businesses every day. With the Richmond Hill Board of Trade, I've seen the people from B to Next try very hard to reach out to the business community. They've done a great job and they deserve a lot of credit for that. Now imagine if after we, as the Board of Trade, consulted our members and we gave them advice, they actually changed some of the construction plans. 
I've seen the town economic development department do a lot of work reaching out to local businesses. It's incredible how much input they take in and how much explaining they do to help us. Now imagine if uh, those uh, conversations were to lead to lower costs, more stable taxes and more efficient, and even more efficient government. I've seen the town economic development department do a great job work, uh, reaching out to the local business community and bringing good businesses to Richmond Hill. Now imagine if those corporate headquarters came to Richmond Hill at least as often as they went to Markham and Vine. My experience has taught me that a collaborative and constructive approach is the best way to uh, handle negotiations. I want to work with people, I want to work with staff. There are some people running that might not want to think about things that way. I believe in working constructively and engaging and that's what I intend to do on council. I'm committed to use my problem solving skills to try to solve some of the problems that bother all of us. Even though we live in a great town, there's always that little thing that bugs us a little bit. I'm going to work to try to make that better. As parents with two young children, Heather and I have really enjoyed the new Lake Wilcox Park. It's a great example of wonderful work that's been done in Richmond Hill. We use the splash pad like thousands of other uh, parents and grandparents. It's wonderful. But, you know, we ask ourselves, could there, be a, could there be a little bit more parking in the area? I don't know why things have turned out that way, but I'm committed to finding out and trying to do something about it. Heather and I have enjoyed taking our children to swimming and skating lessons. Richmond Hill provides wonderful programs. Um, we've also seen that a lot of the classes fill up almost immediately, and some of them never fill up at all before they've ended. I don't know why things happen that way, but I'm committed to find out and try to do something about it. As a husband and father, I believe that Richmond Hill provides great services to our residents, to young families, and I am committed to continuing those great services. I'm also committed to trying to fix some of the problems that bother people every once in a while. I know we live in one of the safest communities in Canada. Uh, I have full confidence in our police and fire departments. It, that not everyone knows the police are funded by York Region government. Um, I also know that we have the largest police budget in Canada outside of the city of Toronto. And right now the police are asking for, my, for more money to deal with legalized marijuana. I don't know enough yet to say whether those funds are required. I'm going to do my due diligence and find out. Uh, what I'm committed to do is asking tough questions and ensuring that our tax dollars get spent well. I believe the region might be able to redirect our police resources from things like speed traps into solving car break-ins, uh, preparing for legalized marijuana and other activities that perhaps are more important to the residents of our community. One issue facing drivers is something that you might not know. Uh, when all the construction is done outside here on Young Street, there are going to be bus lanes in the middle of the road for the Viva buses, and it's going to be, uh, I believe, a great setup for our community. There are also, though, going to be York Region buses that continue to travel along the right side of the road. And those buses are not going to have a right turn lane to pull into when they stop because all the right, most of the right turn lanes are being removed. So they're going to be stopped at intersections and during a green light there's going to be a line of traffic behind them. I'm a little worried that the drive might be even worse after construction than it was before, although transit I'm sure will be vastly improved. Uh, these plans were written half a decade ago. I think it's reasonable to look at them again, figure out whether getting rid of all those right turn lanes still makes sense in light of the current conditions, and I am committed to finding out and doing something about it. I know it isn't easy to amend construction plans like this, but I'm going to try. If staff tell me it's tough, that's not going to be a reason for me to back down. I want to know that it's right, not just that it's hard to do. And you know what else would improve traffic flow? Uh, in November, the City of Toronto started a smart uh, traffic signal pilot project. These are traffic signals that can essentially talk to each other and it helps improve the flow of traffic along major roads. I want to see the same technology in York Region. I'm, and of course, everyone in this room, I think, knows that the uh, subway is eventually coming down Young Street to Highway 7, and we all support that, I believe, right? <laughs> um, we have commitments from both levels of the government, and regional government has done a good job reaching out, uh, particularly in the last year or two. But we can't stop pushing every time we get a little bit of money. To give you an example, Ontario didn't get a green belt because environmentalists stopped asking for more. They kept pushing after the Rouge Park was created. When the Oak Ridges Marine Park was created, they didn't give up. Even once the Green Belt was formed, we still have people pushing for a federal Rouge Park. We have to take a lesson from that as York Region, 
and we have to adopt the state strategy with our transportation priorities. We want full, sub full funding for the Young Subway now. We want plans to expand the... We want plans to expand the 404 north of 16th Avenue now. We want a bridge over the railroad tracks on Elgin Mills now. We want the bottleneck where the DVP crosses over the 401 to be fixed now. Now, uh, I, I know that we're not going to get those things now, but if we don't demand them, then I fear that we're not even going to get them five years from now. And these are projects that were needed over a decade ago. We have to raise our voices, we have to be firm, and we have to demand that we get what we need in York Region. This is going to be a key election for Richmond Hill. With Vito and Brenda Hogg retiring, we're losing over 50 years of experience, and we are going to miss it. Uh, when you have two openings like this, there's a risk that somebody might get elected who doesn't understand what's great about Richmond Hill. There's a risk that somebody might get elected who has nothing to do other than knock on doors over the summer. There's a risk that somebody might get elected who doesn't have a clue what the region of York does. And there's a risk that somebody might get elected who's going to spend your tax dollars on golf clubs. <laughs> but as, as I think uh, Marge and Janine were both saying, we live in a town where only a third of people live in municipal elections. I've been knocking on doors and I know that I'm not the only one. And as I look over to this side, I forgot two people who are in the room that I definitely want to acknowledge before I finish. Uh, Richard Rupp, the president of the Federal Liberal Association in Richmond Hill is here. And Ted Leader, the, the president of the Federal Conservative Association in Richmond Hill is here. Uh, I believe it is vitally important to reach out to all different political parties and not be partisan in municipal politics. That is something I'm committed to going forward. Let's get back to the speech. <laughs> I've been knocking on doors and I know I'm not the only one. To win this election, I need your help to knock on as many doors as possible, to send out as many brochures as possible, and to put up as many signs as possible. To do this, I need three things. Volunteers, donations, and another lawyer in my office to do the work. <laughs> I really appreciate you all of you coming out here today. Thank you for listening, and to those of you who are already decided, it seems like everybody, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. <laughs> I am, I am going to ask you for another favor. Please uh, go to the uh, back of the room where the entrance is when you have a moment. Uh, write down your name and let us know if you're willing, to, if you have time to volunteer. Are you able to help knock on doors? Are you able to make phone calls? If you have the money, are you able to make a donation? I have to raise $100,000 to run this campaign and uh, succeed in the election. Uh, I would really appreciate your support, and if you sign up for that, someone will follow up with you afterwards. If we all work together, I do believe that we can have success in this election and we can ensure that Richmond Hill has a great council going forward and I can get elected. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.
for my candidacy for the regional and local council for the town of Richmond Hill. I have been a long time support to my hometown in many community service standards. However, this is a very exciting opportunity for me to continue to give back to the community on an even bigger scale. Someone to be heard about what I'm doing around and in their community. And the primary goal is to help you carry and pay for assistance so that we can enrich and empower each other life. Because I want each of them here to be the best place to live in the dark mountain. The best place in Greater Toronto to live, the best place to come with you, the best place to put up a place, the best place to call our home. I hope you have a very enjoyable evening. Tonight I'm celebrating my candidacy for regional and local council of Richmond Hill. Thank you so much for your support. Have a nice evening. Thanks again. Thank you. It's in honor of Mohammed and paying tribute to Mohammed there in the Danforth. These Pan Americans here today. They are all of our options. So please take a look. Much rather. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and one um, just to let you do let you know I do have four children one is not here today he's on vacation unfortunately uh, Jared um, so he, that's why he's not here but as I look around I have to tell you how pleased I am to see each and every one of you and I have met you in my journey in the past four years with the events that I have attended and I just want to say thank you for coming out and sharing this moment with me. Now, a lot of people want to know what is it that I have done and why would I run again for re-election? Well, I have to let you know that there are quite a few things and we're not going to go through every single thing, but it's all highlighted in the kit that we were, we, you were provided. But I'm going to share uh, like a few um projects that I worked very hard uh, in the past four years. One is um, domestic violence against women. I have had the opportunity to work with Delaware House, which is a shelter here in the city of Markham, and worked very hard to raise funds so that they could sustain themselves for the next four years until the provincial government funding materializes. In addition to working with Yellow Brick House, I've worked for seniors in working to have support system in place for them. For example, when they speak about transportation, when they speak about access to community uh, centers, when they speak about access to the kind of programs the city of Markham has. And by doing this and recognizing, and how did I get to know what the concerns are of seniors? I sit on the Seniors Advisory Board for the York Region, and I sit on the Seniors Advisory Committee here for the City of Markham. So when you want to know about something, you need to put yourself in that area, and that's what I have done. Now, we all know that York University campus is coming here to the City of Markham. Well, when I first got elected, I ran on transparency and accountability, and when we had the announcement of York University coming, I said to our mayor and our council, we need to be transparent, we need to be accountable to Markham residents so that they know what's going on. And I suggested that we form a subcommittee. That subcommittee has been meeting for the past year and a half. We have engaged the community and its stakeholders, uh, the business, uh, the different disciplines, here that we have in the city of Markham, whatever the profession may be. So we have been working very hard, and I could at least say to you that we are going to be um, having our groundbreaking sometime in fall of this year. And we're hoping to have the university open in 2021. 
Now that's going to be 4,000 students. So could you imagine the challenges we are going to have with transportation, with a housing, with the businesses, with safety, all those things is what we're working on as we progress. Now, I have to tell you, um, I am so proud to hear from my dad who have spoken about his, um, his time in, in moving from Trinidad to here and um, one or two of the obstacles that he has encountered. And I've always learned a lot from my parents, my mom and my dad, and I am so blessed to have them here with me, still alive and still celebrating. And I think, Mom and Dad, you celebrated your 65th wedding anniversary just recently. 65. So could you imagine today's society, unfortunately, people do not hold on to marriages for so long because there are a lot of other problems that they face. And, you know, my parents, they're my rock. And without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'll give you a clear example. And I'm deviating a little bit because this is who I am, and I need you to understand why it is that I do what I do. When I was running for politics, and we're talking in the past, my daughter indicated when I was pregnant with her, she was she knew about politics because I would read and I would be attending political. And Amanda is 23 years old, so 23 years ago I've been on this journey. And my mom would say to me, after I've lost one of these nomination battles, and the following day I'll be in court, she would say to me, Han, where do you get this energy from? How do you manage to, you're defeated, and now you're going the following day to help these people in the courthouse. And I looked at her and I said, Mom, I got it from you. I got it from you and Dad because you guys had your struggle. My dad indicated that we've been living here in Canada for 50 years. Well, we have had our journey, and I have to say to you, Malcolm here is the most diverse city in all of Canada. And I don't know how many of you have been in Canada for over 50 years, but I'll tell you, when we were growing up, we were the only visible minority that you could see. And we didn't have an opportunity to share the culture that we do today. That's why when I go to the Asian community culture, the South Asian community, the African, the Hungarian, the Italian, all these different communities were able to share the different culture with each other. We didn't have that then. So, coming back to my family here, my husband, he says that, you know, he's uh, amazing and uh, I, I couldn't be blessed more than what I am right, have right now with, with him. And my children, I am so fortunate to have them doing the things that they do. Thank you so much. But I want to say to you, to you guys, you're the media. You guys do so much. You raise awareness about issues here in the city of Markham. We've had situation about the asylum seekers. We've had people pro and against. We've had uh, what Doug Ford has done with the downsizing of the city of Toronto um, elected officials. We've had where he changed from our elected chair and now we do not elect a chair in your region. We've had a lot of things, and you've been there talking about it. And I can only applaud you, the media, for being there, taking the interest, and bringing this information to the forefront of Markham residents and your region residents. So when we talk about passionate and what I'm all about and why it is that I'm running, you've heard some of the things. But there's something dear to me. And I saw this, and I saw this uh, wheelchair water park, and I saw that it, it, this uh, couple who has a, a young child, and that child was in the water park, and because the child was physically challenged, that the child wasn't allowed to go into certain things. So what he did is he formed a park, and it's called the, uh, the water park, um, accessible for all, and it's in San Antonio in the United States. And I said that given the work that I do with people with Parkinson's disease, with autism, with cancer, with a whole list of other diseases, mental health illness, that we don't really look at because we're so busy in our day-to-day -day, um, lifestyle, that I said we need a place like this in Markham. 
So I have started my journey. I've spoken with the city staff. I've spoken with our mayor. I've spoken with other members of the community here, and they are on board. So I am looking forward to the next four years to creating this water park, fun park for people with a disability. So someone with a wheelchair could go in. And if you want a little more information about it, please check out my social media because it, it's in there. When you see that video, you would be so um, pleased to know that we are going to challenge something like this and make it happen here in the city of Markham. Now, there are a lot of things. We talk about youth homelessness. Well, um, we have an agency called 360 Kids. And 360 Kids, their mandate is to help young people who have been homeless. So think about homelessness. What do you think? Well, someone who no longer lives at home, who's been kicked out. But do you know what homelessness also means? Well, if my daughter got annoyed with me and she went and she stayed with a friend for a week and slept on her couch, that's homeless for a week. And we don't see it as homelessness, but it happens. So we have to make certain that we are there for those individuals. We have to make certain that they have the resources so what I did is I brought together over 50 different um, businesses to come and learn about 360 Kids and how they can help young people here in the city of Markham by providing employment for them. So those are some of the things that I have done. There's so many other things um, with respect to women's issue, seniors issue, youth issue, um, and, and then employment uh, for all of us, affordable housing infrastructure we talk about we need to have infrastructure here in the city of markham before we can progress and one infrastructure will be better roads well we are working on that we're working on it in your region because they're regional roads and here in the city of markham but you know what we're asking each and every one of you <clears throat> excuse me for a second we're, as we're asking you to carpool Instead of just using your car and you alone being in that car, carpool. Then we have Smart Commute, which is you park your car in an area, but then you take transit. We're asking you to fill the, the transit system that we have, because when we first started, we would have complaints from people saying, nobody's taking it. And we're spending money to help you to move from one place to the other. So we're encouraging you to do that. So there are a lot of things here in the city of Markham that we continue to work on. We have a bus terminal coming up right next to Markham Stovall Hospital at Ninth Line and Highway 7. That's going to be something that, again, the transportation, the route, and accessible um, transportation for each and every one of you. We have condominiums coming up. And you want to know why it is that we have to have those condominiums built here in the city of Markham. Why can't they go to another municipality or another area? Well, with the places to grow at here in Ontario, um, we are designated to have more people come into your region. And where can they go? City of Markham is one of the places. So where do we place, place these people? We've got, if you look at north of Major Mackenzie, we've got green area. There's a future urban area that's coming forward in the next couple of years that there's going to be growth. Do we want to go further in the green belt? No. So we need to put people, we need to place them, so we have to look at where can we. So Highway 7 is de designated as intensification area. So our buildings that are going to be 20 to 40 stories are going to be built. It's not going to be built tonight or tomorrow, but within five years, ten years. So we are experiencing growth. We are experiencing more homes. And whether it's affordable, we're trying our best. Because with a new law that's been passed with the planning act, the government has indicated that we want to um, entice developers to at least include housing that are affordable. So we, as council, we're going to make certain that when they come forward to say that they're going to be building this building, this condo that's 40 stories, we want to make certain that there's going to be some affordable homes in that condo for others. So there's a lot of things work still to get done, 
work that have been accomplished. And we, the last thing I want to touch on is multiculturalism. When you look at the culture that we have today, I go to so many different different cultures, and I share the, the culture, whether it be the, the way we dress, the food we eat, the certain pattern of behavior. What I would like to do is I'd like to bring it together, bring the cultures together. And in my next four years, we're going to be hosting a lot of events where we can bring each and every culture together and share those experiences. And that's what we need to do. So that's another thing that I'm asking for your support so that we can work together. So I will leave it open now for questions from the media, if, please. Uh, is 
transmission. Number one is respond to the needs of a growing community. Number two, promote regional economy. Number three, strengthen service of mental health support. Number four, improve public transit. Provide affordable housing. And number six, promote community safety. So tonight is a very good uh, opportunity for you, you all. Let's collect in our common goals. Your ideas and your input is very important for me. So let's bring a strong to it. Now, number one. Let's focus on number one. Respond to the needs of a growing community. Okay, what do we need? Meet the various demands of growing population, especially new immigrants. Provide family support and various services, such as affordable daycare, before and after school programs, senior care, and with youth programs. Now, these are the needs of the, for the growing community. Do you agree? So, Michael, what is it, your, your uh, comment for this? I'm here, I'm here with, with you always. Okay, so the first one is important in the needs of group community. So, I just want to ask you a question. And everybody wants to know that. Okay. So, how do you carry out this vision? How do you make a list of growing communities in your head if you were the counselor? How do you carry out this vision to the public? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm here as a really motivate everybody to so do go as a good citizen. So, I promote a citizenship uh, education. Promote equity and inclusivity, build a collaborative relationship, and empower the ethical leadership. Do you think it's the most important part? So, if we have a common goal, we have a um, collaboration team, and then we work together. This is the first part. The rest, of course, we have different teams. We work out. Okay? So, number two is for more regional economy. And charge a high value business and foster talents. Coordinate between cities to attract different types of business, especially those of a high economic value. Foster and attract a variety of talents, especially education and business. Encourage both secondary institutions and high tech research companies to set up campuses and offices. You know, uh, Michael, you know that my neighborhood, as a as, as my neighborhood for my office, is a lot of the um, educational system to up. Like you have a school or art programs, like a dancing school and or children's school, they all available in between here. So it's amazing. Do you think do you think it's a, a very priority, very high priority for all? As we all know, you are the young region trustee for eight years before, yeah? right? Yeah. Okay, so your your strong background is education the field. So how to correlate the economy with educational aspect for them? Okay. You know, since uh, I think 30 years ago to now, I realized uh, Richard Hill, um, and not just between here, your region, across your region, there's a lot of uh, famous schools and um, education institutes. So that's one of the best way to attract uh, outside investment, especially real estate, you know, the, the value of the housing, they all result, right? So I treat it actually it's so important is to remove you know, make it a more you know um, benefit for the economy. So how about the third one? Yeah, the third one 
is a uh, streaming service or mental health support. So increase support through funding and frontline service provide sufficient follow-up uh, services for adult patients over 21 years old, develop mental health well-being programs such as art therapy and youth support. See, our children dance, you remember our only dance is so beautiful, right? So they very engaged and well-being. Skin can be more effective if delivered in collaboration. You agree? So, one more again. So, why do you think mental health support is so important in the region of the day? And then, elaborate more points for why do you think this is so Oh, you know, based on my, uh, our the stages mentioned, one out of three from JK to university students, you know what happens? They involve the mental health issues. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we have to work hard how to help the, our new generation and everyone to stay in a good uh, situation and well-being. So, how to treat it? Mental health is very important. That's why we work hard and grow it together. We solve this problem. Okay, improve public transit. Ladies and gentlemen, are you interested in this, this issue? This part, we all know there is a problem with traffic conditions. We will work diligently with common levels of government to obtain funding for proposed subway extension to Richard Hill to facilitate travel to downtown Toronto. We will and revise existing transportation system especially we want us to optimize the operations. Encourage other forms of green transportation such as electric cars and cycling. Are you agree with me? Absolutely. Good. So how about this one? How about the top five? Hawaii. Affordable housing. Real estate prices have risen making home ownership and rent difficult. We will support low-income families and newcomers to settle down. We will adjust funding to provide subsidized um, rentals. We will and construction more affordable housing units. How do you think this is one? It's really important. The point is, someone will show that if you build more affordable housing, it will increase the burden of tax based money. So, how do you solve this problem? You know, as a good government, it's been very clear and take, it will take the initiative to how to balance the, the budget. What is the priorities? What's the most important? Thing? And as a, a good government, they have to care. So every single penny is going to be wisely used. That's why tonight we have a common goal. How to achieve our one community. You know, um, based on our tax in information, our written help is the, for the past 10 years, it is um, the overall the tax is the highest. So that's why we have to urge government how to no balance. I will nice. Yes. Okay, so I have a next one. Point six. Oh, promote community safety. Oh, this is my favorite um, issues. Promote good citizenship and responsibility among young people. Increase your leadership and community outreach programs. Strengthen relations with your region. Police by improving police community liaisons and neighborhood watch program. So, Michael, how do you think this this one? I was thinking it's also concerned more about this about the community. Is a really big concern about this. I've done some of the shot. I've yeah. had it recently. Okay, so it's really good one. So, yeah, it's a good spot. I think it's six point of your vision and also your platform. Right. Yeah. So, um. You know, in Chinese, I have a very great slogan. 
Let's show you some sun chai ga ji go ping ting ha. That means this is my priority. If anybody taking this to do fulfill your good role as a good citizen, then you don't need to worry about the future because if the family is strong, the community is it is, it is very solid, and our government and our country will be big and strong enough. Okay, this is my vision of one community. It should be also your vision of one community. Yes, say it. How do we go to the world? I hope we will be able to do it. So, we will be able to do it. We will be able to do it. 就是個逆進呢個美好家園體操，多謝各位 ，Thank you so much。So please come join the table and be seated. We will share with you the following video presentation. And as we come back, we'll take the next one. I have to see you. So, if you want to talk about it, you can talk about it. So, if you want to talk about it, you can talk about it. 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 Like full house, I was really, really to my surprise and then actually very well my my thanks from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. So let's go there. You go given I my my one of the guests in the moment. I just want to thank you all for your support. So since you have come here, so I'm going to talk about why I was in the six months I was chosen as the leader. Actually, in the back there are many friends. 屋企啦，特別好多人嘅支持。咁點解話誒四年之後我都繼續再接再厲咧？因為我本身咧喺 Wilton 呢一區啊，第八區啦，啊、呃，我住咗十五年嘅陳樂，咁一路喺誒、呃，即係呢一區都係由誒讀書開始啊，翻工啊，一路都係喺呢一區，係都我係陪住呢一區大。咁我喺度睇到其實呢一區係誒。呃係喺萬錦市嚟講大家點會知啊？萬錦市係分開有八個 area 啦，八區啦。咁我哋呢度屬於第八區，拉近市容啦。其實係一 one of the most developed、uh, areas、uh, in Marton， 啊，百年 thirty years ago。咁而家咧，去到即係今時今日啦，大家都睇到可能第八區會係一個比較、uh, 老化啲啦，發展可能因為已經發展咗啦。咁其實都係好需要、uh, 一啲嘅 care 落去。咁我睇到即係呢十五年嚟，萬錦市其實一路嘅嘅改變啊，或者嘅發展喺裏邊咧，啊可能都係着重喺啊，因為因為北邊啊，北邊比較新啊。
咁咧亦都發展好多，咁跟住亦都會喺東邊啊，亦都有的確啦，我哋邊嘅 area 啊咁樣。咁但係唯獨是我哋第八區咧，始終因為可能幾十年前有一路發展，大家可能會忽略咗，市政府亦都可能係冇咁多嘅資源投放喺呢一區。咁所以誒，即、啊、係、就是、一路嘅時候，我都會覺得，如果我可以歸收我嘅群商，或者大家居民嘅群商，啊，去到議會嘅路化俾大家聽，其實住喺我哋呢一區。唔係一個老化嘅地區，啊、我哋亦都會有好多嘅發展，啊、特別係可能喺交通配套方面啊，我哋點樣可以加強去應對，譬如話喺 South of Seals、s i t y City of Toronto 啦，同埋我哋英國，我哋第八區啱啱就係 Downtown m a r k e t 呢個新興新誒發展嘅地方，點樣可以有多啲嘅誒交通嘅配套，可以去 support 到咧，即係等等嘅呢啲問題，其實。一路都喺我個腦裏邊，都會睇下點樣可以好好嘅去啊去規劃去改善。如果我哋而家呢一刻唔再出聲唔去 plan 嘅時候咧，我哋嘅未來嘅十年只會越嚟越擠塞。我哋一路見到越嚟越多人口喺度膨脹嘅時候，我哋都冇力去疏通。咁、这、呢個即係其中一個我嘅諗法啦。咁但係我好慶幸啊，即、就、係、是、一路以嚟由我讀書時代細個開始啊，即係我屋企人都俾我好大嘅鼓勵誒，亦、啊、都教咗我好多誒點、啊、樣去。啊、對公民社會 engagement 點樣你去啊？去投身社會，你去關心社會嘅好多出面嘅議題。咁所以啊，誒即係呢個其實我一路都唔係一個好多一樣嚟嘅，因為成日咧都快出街啦，誒一路話同人開會啊，各樣嘢咁樣啦，即係為咗我想做嘅好多嘢，咁就放棄咗可能好多同屋企相處嘅時間。咁但係咧，我都好多謝好多謝，尤其是我都結埋婚啦，生埋女啦，咁咧都好多謝我屋企人。誒、啊、不斷嘅去無私嘅去幫我去睇住我個女，咁所以我先可以，即係我同我先生先可以 free up 到時間去做我哋中意做嘅嘢。咁亦都啊，即係我都唔使講啦，我都好多謝我嘅即係我我嘅先生 Kenneth 啦，因為其實我我主要問我哋咧，我哋邊啲嚟？誒 ，It's him who will inspire me。Um, so I should be uh, but my passion for the art of art. Um, and、uh, yeah, so he um. 係咯，即係從來我之前都冇諗過話，即係四年前啊，都冇諗過話，我真係會出嚟參選行嘅一個。Even though I study politics, but I never, I never thought I, I would be standing here, like having a fundraising and now running my own campaign. 咁但係誒，即係去到呢一步，其實都係因為 Kenneth 佢誒背後嘅支持咯，即係佢成日都覺得。你成日都喺度講，或者你好似好有 passion 去做嘢，但係你唔付諸行動、啊，你可能啊好安於現狀嘅，咁其實你唔會 make things happen 嘅喎，咁係佢一路嘅鼓勵佢嘅支持，所以咧其實喺呢一個時間咧，我真係唔好意思，我一路其實冇乜時間咧同屋企人咧影相，我可唔可以咧請我屋企人出嚟咧，即係俾少少時間我咧可以，同埋同埋好條，好條 ，Where are you？ 好條喺邊啊？係<笑>啊係啊，誒佢、啊啊啊、希望我嚇親佢啦，佢今日都全場走啊，佢仲見過我啊，一見到人就話：我係一出，我出翻個 say hi to everyone 咁樣。咁<笑>可以係咯，同埋我爹哋媽咪啦，我細佬啦，啊同埋 Sandy 啦，我弟仔啦，同埋我啊我奶奶啦，最緊要啊，內奶奶啦，我老爺啦，我你睇你掌聲就知啦，其實唔係我嘅，係我奶奶嘅。多謝我大家都係其中我一個今日好主力嘅誒籌款嘅得力嘅 chair 頭 chair， 爺爺爺爺爺爺喺邊啊？啊爺爺嚟緊。<笑>难怪他很有信心，因为他整个家庭都在支持他，厉害啊 ！So the support of the family is absolutely amazing。即系我行到今时今日呢一步咧，除咗屋企，屋企真系冇行埋嘅支持啦。我可以同你讲，有一啲咧 inspire 我好多嘅一啲嘅年轻嘅朋友。点解我讲特别年轻咧？真系我啲同学仔，由我读书时候开始，已经一路系陪我行噶啦。啊！我嘅 core team 嘅朋友咯，即係又又話係一樣，哎，我唔想行，係咯，誒，因為其實我哋一路大家一班子同到嘅朋友，都係誒細細個開始已經係好 engage， 亦都係有一個心，希望可以將來有一日可以去貢獻翻我哋嘅社會，特別係可能你我哋身處嘅多倫多嘅地方，有好多嘢大家都
啊，其實都係冇安心㗎。大家都喺各自嘅崗位啊，即係由讀書開始做嘢又好，無論係我打電飛嘅時候、中文辯論學會嘅時候，一路都係陪住我行嘅。Okay? 呢一班嘅朋友，我唔想講名啦，你哋自己出嚟啦，我啊，<笑>出嚟啦，出嚟啦，我又想同大家影張相，因為呢一班人真係喺背後，其實都係一樣，唔係我一個人努力咯。啊，我真係今時今日，大家見到可能台面咧，我咁靚嘅一個 platform 咧，誒，我嘅宣傳嘅單張啦，啊，我嘅誒，我嘅誒，所有嘅成個劇編嘅運作啦，其實都係呢一班咁好咁好嘅朋友咁多年。一路嘅支持，一路嘅陪住我，去去撐，俾我鼓勵啦！我撐你今時今日啦，我我真係要祝人嘅啦，真係。件事係邊？件事係我哋嘅 chief designer， 我我所有 campaign 嘅 materials， 多謝你。跟住唔使講啦，我哋非常好好嘅朋友啦，嗰啲前輩唔好講前輩，師兄啦嘛，偶像人稱偶像嘅 Charles 啦。但係電腦奇才嚟嘅，係啊，多謝多謝多謝，多謝多謝，依位已經係誒一路陪陪我成長啊嘅自己嘅師兄啊，係咯，咁啊，正正 ，sorry 啊，係 Alex Alex， 又係我其實咧，當年第一次打辯論中文辯論學會嘅時候咧，誒，我嘅隊友，今時今日十幾年啦已經，咁跟住 Coco Eric。嗰個 Eric 咧也有幫得手啦，雖然佢啊，我同佢係好好好嘅朋友。雖然其實佢曾經，佢咪曾經，佢係佢係我老公嘅好朋友，但係一日變咗係我嘅好朋友。咁<笑>就係大家大學同學咯，就同學咯，咁樣係啦。同埋 Eric 又好好。咁跟住啦 ，Sandy Sandy 喺邊度 ？Sandy 呢個我真係要嗌佢做大佬。係啊，我由細個我又我點解會投身做義工喺大學，搞呢個義工組織？我係一路睇住佢，睇住佢逐步逐步跟住佢。我喺 ACC 幫手做義工，我又係跟埋佢。今日到而家，誒而家師姐會啦，我又係跟住佢，乜嘢都係跟住佢。咁跟住你仲有咧，老公去咗邊啊？老公。老公，老公咧要介紹出嚟，因為咧老公仲有一班好好嘅大學同學，今日咧都唔介意你咧坐咗喺最後，幾乎最後嘅地方，因為佢哋都係一路支持翻啦，支持我哋嘅工作。咁啊，其實我哋仲有啊 ，Alan 啦，同 Michael 啦，咁啊，佢哋兩個係我誒 Doors Open Markham 誒嘅 committee 嘅 member 識嘅，咁啊，佢哋對呢啲嘅 data 啲 analysis 係好嘅，所以咧我哋要好需要啲。資料咧，佢係供應俾我哋嘅。咁啊，跟住仲有我啲大學同學啦，啊，全會大學同學啦，啊，仲有 B B 啦。咁咧就誒，佢哋咧，因為喺後邊咧，誒、呃，又用錢支持啊，又會用力嘅支持啦、啊。佢哋咧，全部都好支持。四年前就支持，而家又支持。咁啊，所以咧，佢哋全部都好。咁但係其實咧，誒、呃，話話咁多，其實你哋每一個彩度咧，其實都係支持緊嘅。啊！多謝大家嘅支持，因為如果冇你哋咧，我哋冇可以 Lisa 咧企到嘅今日，所以咧、呃、希望你從將將你全部嘅掌聲咧，都係亦都係俾你哋嘅。那那我講一下你們對方怎麼話？其實我覺得是一個很重要的事情啊，因為我們不光是啊，是我們的第一代，我們的一年五到第二代的華裔呢，都會願意走出來。啊，带着我们华裔呢，啊，服务贡献社会啊，这个是一个很有意义的事情。So we can see that、uh, we have a lot of 1.5 for second generation Chinese right there on stage. He's told me that、uh, yes, we're, we're all very grateful for the parents who was、uh, who. Oh, wow! How many have you seen? How many have you seen? How many have you seen? Come on, come on, come on. 